Okay, hello children. Um, yesterday we have dealt with the chromosomal disorders and today we will deal with the gene disorder. So, in the gene disorders, the defect lies in the nucleotide sequence. The defect lies in the nucleotide sequence and gene disorders are also called as Mendelian disorders or they are also called as monogenic disorder because it is due to the defect in a single gene and the inheritance pattern follows the Mendelian pattern where we can clearly trace the movement of the gene in a family. Now here some of the examples I gave that is hemophilia, color blindness, sickle cell anemia, thalassemia and phenylketone urea. So these are the diseases about which we will know a uh, brief about these diseases. So what do you mean by gene disorders? Disorders due to the defect in a gene. Gene in the sense nucleotide sequence which you are going to read in molecular basis of inheritance. Fine. Now let us go to the first disorder which is called hemophilia or it is also called bleeder's disease or it is also called royal disease. It is called bleeder's disease because the blood clot uh, will be late. The clotting time for the blood when we will get injury will be delayed. That is why it is called bleeders. And it is called royal because for the first time it was described in detail uh, in royal family of England in Queen Victoria's family. That is why it is called royal disease. Now this was for the first time described by Dr. John Conrad Otto. It was described by John Conrad Otto and usually whenever injury occurs the blood clotting time will get delayed that is the major symptom fine so let us see the symptom little later so this is about the hemophilia this will be asked for two or three marks in the annual exam so hemophilia will occur due to the defect in the clotting factors you, you have studied the clotting, blood clotting in first year and so many factors are responsible and we have studied the best and tailors method of clotting, blood clotting. So here the hemophilia is classified into different types depending upon the deficiency or the defect in the clotting factors. Like here we have got three types of hemophilia. Type A hemophilia, type B hemophilia and type C hemophilia. Type A hemophilia is found 80%. I mean if you take hemoph occurrence of hemophilia in the society as 100% and then among those hemophilia, 80% type is the type A hemophilia and it is due to the deficiency in the factor 8, clotting factor 8. So type A hemophilia is due to the deficiency of clotting factor 8 and 80% of the hemophilia will be of this type. And the type B hemophilia, it is caused by the deficiency of clotting factor 9 and 20%, nearly 90 to 20% of hemophilia is type B. It is also called Christmas disease. Type B is also called Christmas disease which is asked in the CET. Now type C is a rare, only 1% among the hemophilia will be type C and it is caused due to the deficiency of the clotting factor 11. So you have to remember these three types of hemophilia. So what, how many types are there in hemophilia? Three. What are they called? Type A hemophilia which is caused due to the deficiency of clotting factor 8. Type B hemophilia which is caused due to the deficiency of clotting factor 9 and type C 11 due to the deficiency of clotting factor 11. Among this which is most common type A is more common. Uh, what is the other name for the type B hemophilia? It is the Christmas disease. Fine. And now let us go through the symptoms. In the symptoms I told you that if uh, injury or a cut occurs on the body, usually our blood will get clotted. Our blood will form a plague and the blood flow will get stopped. 
but the persons who is suffering with the hemophilia the clotting will not takes place soon it will be delayed the delaying time may vary depending upon the factor fine so the that is the symptom that is also one symptom and bleeding in the joints usually in the joints bleeding will be there which is associated with pain and swelling in the joints the person will a uh, person we will find a swelling and the pain in hemophilic person and here you'll see a gastro intestinal and urinary tract hemorrhage the blood capillaries will rupture and here in this particular places where the rich supply of capillaries are there we will see the hemorrhage and then major surgery sometimes even if it is severe the surgery result in the death even the tooth extraction also sometimes result in the death so this is about the hemophilia and you know in the royal family of england in victoria's family the gene occurred in the queen due to mutation it occurred in the queen due to mutation and let us see the inheritance pattern of hemophilia it is a sex linked disorder let us see the inheritance pattern now let us see the inheritance pattern of hemophilia you know hemophilia it is a x linked recessive gene disorder the gene which is responsible for hemophilia is present on the x chromosome so it is x linked yesterday already i told you that during the inheritance the for, from the father the x chromosome is transmitted to the daughters and from the mother x chromosome is transmitted to the sons that is why the occurrence of this disease is more in the males than in the females now let us see usually criss cross will follow sorry this hemophilia will follow criss cross inheritance hemophilia it follows criss cross inheritance what do you mean by criss cross inheritance here the disease is transmitted from father to the grandson it will skip one generation the disease is transmitted from father to the grandson through the daughter so it is going to skip one generation that is why this disease is also called as skip off disease a skip off inheritance pattern or it is also called as zigzag inheritance fine so what are the three names the one is criss cross inheritance second one is zigzag because it will follow zigzag pattern or it is also called as skip off skip off as it is skipping one generation now let us see the criss cross inheritance other other patterns you can write very easily as you have studied the uh, blood group inheritance and the simple mendelian a uh, inheritance pattern already you have studied mono hybrid crosses so uh, problem solving is no problem that is uh, drawing the inheritance pattern is no problem now let us take one example of criss cross inheritance when the normal vision female marries a color blind sorry hemophilic hemophilic father i wrote here color blind let me write hemophilic marries a hemophilic man marries a hemophilic or you can say deceased man the grandson inherits this disease so this i am showing in a schematic presentation uh, so genotypes of this disease we have to know so x is to capital h x is to capital h that is capital h re represents the normal gene and small h its recessive will represent the uh, diseased gene that is the one which will result in the deficiency of the clotting factor so if the if the female possesses both capital h capital h then that female will be normal everything is normal if she possesses one recessive gene and one dominant gene she is called as carrier because of the presence of the dominant gene the recessive gene will not express any of its character that is why it is called as carrier so uh, one capital h one small h will result in a carrier female and hemophilic 
females will be having both the recessive genes hemophilic will be having both the recessive genes and usually the hemophilic uh, females are very rare because they are not going to survive up to the maturity and uh, for normal males x will be having the capital h and on the y there are no genes and uh, hemophilic man will be having the uh, recessive gene on the x chromosome so these are the genotypes how we can write the hemophilic genotype in the human beings now let us take the parent uh, for the first generation we will take the parent as non hemophilic mother and hemophilic father so non hemophilic mother that is mother is normal so we wrote capital h capital h and hemophilic father so capital uh, here we have to write the small h and y because father is suffering with the hemophilia and uh, gametes as usual haploid we have to take and then we have to do the crossing as it is a very simple type of crossing no need us to draw the punnett square if you are getting confused then you can write the punnett square how we are going to write how many gametes will form so those many rows and columns you have to draw and you can easily find it out now here if ova will get fertilized by the x chromosome uh, the sperm having x chromosome then it will result in the female so here one capital h that is one normal gene and one recessive genes are present so this female will be the carrier for that disease she herself is not going to suffer with the disease and males as they receive x chromosome from the mother they all will receive the uh, normal x chromosome from the mother so in the first generation even though the father is suffering with the disease even though the father is suffering with the disease the children will never suffer with the disease as they have got the normal gene for hemophilia now let us take the second parent so here the female is carrier the female is carrier got married to a normal man who is normal who is not suffering with the hemophilia neither the mother is suffering with the hemophilia but she is a carrier she is having the defective gene on her x chromosome and gamete formation you know that 50% of the gametes will be the i mean chances are there that the 50% of the gametes which are formed may be having the capital h which are that is normal a uh, gene for the clotting and another 50% may be the defective gene for the clotting factor so as you know that in the oogenesis only one ova is formed if it is our bad luck the x chromosome with the capital h may become the active uted or if if it is really bad luck then x chromosome with a defective gene may become the active uted it is a matter of chance fine now the males will form the 50% of sperms with the x chromosome and another 50% with the y chromosome when the fertilization will take place what are the chances of this uh, hemophilia let us see so here 25% of the females are normal as this receive both normal genes from the father and the mother so no problem they are normal and other 25% of the progeny is among the females were the carriers but they will be not suffering with the disease if you take females as 100% all 100% females are normal fine they will not suffer with any disease but among them 50% chances are there that they may be the carriers and then males when you take as a 100% if you take then 50% of them will be normal and other 50% of them will be suffering with the hemophilia fine so if you take all children as a 100% then every chances in the female and males will be 25 25% if you say in terms of percentage so here when you see the pattern of transmission of recessive gene which is responsible for hemophilia see here the father is having the recessive gene which is responsible for hemophilia and this is getting transmitted to the daughter because father will transmit his x chromosome to the daughter so daughter is the carrier 
and she will not express disease and her defective gene is going to get transmitted to her son fine so her son so here when you see the defective gene is skipping one generation it is skipping one generation and in the next generation we will see the appearance of that disease which was there in the grandfather that is why this pattern of inheritance is called criss cross inheritance what do you mean by criss cross inheritance that is the transmission of the defective gene from the father to the grandson through the daughter it is also called zigzag as it will follow zigzag pattern fine and it is also called skip off because it is skipping one generation hope it is clear what do you mean by criss cross inheritance transmission of a defective gene from the father to the grandson through whom through the daughter fine so this one criss cross inheritance is enough hope others if it will be given you will be able to solve as you know the genotype you can solve it now let us see the other disease now let us see the next one that is the color blindness color blindness it is also x linked recessive gene disorder that is the defective gene is present on the x chromosome so it is x linked here usually the normal person normally a normal person can see 150 colors so 150 colors one can see very clearly in the bright light but a color blind person can see only 25 or less than 25 colors he'll be able to see that is the difference between the color blind and a normal person so usually the the main types of color blindness are two that is monochromatism and dichromatism mono single a monochromatism is that type of color blindness where the person is not able to see the different colors even in the bright light he is totally color blind the world appears to him as a black and white black and white uh, it appears he will be not able to differentiate the different colors such a type of individual such a type of color blindness is called monochromatism and the person is called monochromate person is called monochromate monochromate fine and dichromatism here the person will be confused with two color red and green color he will be not identifying red and green color instead this red and green color he identifies them as a gray color fine he he identifies them as a gray color so this dichromatism is also called as red green color blindness it is also called red green color blindness or it is also called as daltonism daltonism the red green color blindness is also called daltonism after the discovery which is made by charles dalton so this is about the color blindness in the in the dichromatism if the person is suffering with red color blindness if the person is suffering with red color blindness then that is called proteinopia if he is suffering with the green color blindness then that is called deuteropia you have to know the difference between proteinopia and the deuteropia what do you mean by proteinopia it is a red color blindness what uh, defect in the uh, what defect does it have a red color appears gray to the person who is having defective gene for that color and uh, deuteropia it is green color blindness the person will see green color as gray color so that is why it is called deuteropia now hope it is clear what do you mean by color blindness here the person will not be identifying the 150 colors he will be identifying less than 25 colors fine so the defect lies in the formation of the color pigments in the retina in the first year you have studied the pigment identifying cells are present on the retina that is rods and the cones the defect lies in that that is why the identification of colors will become a problem so here in the color blindness two types are there monochromatism dichromatism monochromatism total color blindness the world 
for that particular person appears like a black and white tv and dichromatism here the red and green color identification will become a problem so red green red color blindness is called proteinopia green color blindness is called deuteropia and here i wrote the genotype for the color blindness so usually the normal gene is indicated by capital c and the defective gene is indicated by small c as the defective gene the defective gene lies on the x chromosome it is x linked so here for the normal female on the x chromosome both capital c and capital c are present uh, if the female carries one capital c and one small c then she is considered as the carrier because of the presence of dominant gene she will not suffer with the color blindness if she will be having both the recessive genes on her x chromosome then she will be suffering with the color blindness so these are the three genotypes for the female and males if they have got a capital c on the x chromosome the photo pigments are normal then that male will be normal if he is having a recessive gene on the x chromosome then that male will be suffering with the color blindness and i told you if the usually in the x linked inheritance x linked genes the if the disorder is there it is more precipitated in the males than in the females as males are hemizygous they have got only one x chromosome and the pattern of inheritance of color blindness is same as that of the hemophilia no need for me to write once again and show hope you can do it by yourself and this also will follow the same pattern that is criss cross pattern of inheritance if you take the normal female and the color blind male the pattern of inheritance what you drew for hemophilia the same it will come hope you will do it by yourself now let us see the next disorder and now let us see the next gene disorder that is the sickle cell anemia sickle cell anemia it is a autosomal recessive gene disorder that is the gene responsible for the sickle cell is recessive in condition and it is present on the autosome that is why it is a autosomal recessive gene disorder and it was for the first time studied by polling it was studied by polling in 1949 here the individual carries a defective hemoglobin defective hemoglobin you know that hemoglobin is present in the blood and it is made up of four polypeptide chains hemoglobin is made up of four polypeptide chain among them two are alpha chains which contain 141 amino acids and two are beta chains which contain 146 amino acid so here in the sickle cell anemia the defect lies in the beta chain the defect lies in the beta chain it is because the dna which is coding for this polypeptide is having a defective gene so here a uh, little bit you have studied in the previous class also in the disorder now here the defect usually normally on the dna uh, code for this beta polypeptide uh, is sixth position amino acid is ctc it is in normal dna and complementary on the mrna it is going to code gag and this g a g gene it codes for glutamic acid so this glutamic acid is present in the sixth position of beta polypeptide chain if it is this glutamic acid is there on the sixth it is normal and the hemoglobin will be disc shape or you can say spherical shape you know the shape of the hemoglobin rbcs they are spherical and e nucleated that is why it appears when you see from the top you you will see them as a spherical biconcave so which i drew here if you see from the side you will see like a dumbbell shape here it is concave because of the e nuclear 
generation that is the degeneration of the nucleus so it is the normal condition but in the sickle cell anemia in that person the mutation occurs in the gene which is coding for the glutamic acid so here <coughs> point mutation or gene mutation occurs instead of g in the sickle cell anemic person a will get coded on the dna fine a single nucleotide will get replaced and because of that on the mrna the code for the protein will be g u g the code for the protein will be g u g only one nucleotide got replaced here for that a major defect occurs in the hemoglobin that is instead of coding glutamic acid this gug will code for valine a valine amino acid in the sixth position so in the defective gene in the defective gene the polypeptide chain in the polypeptide chain valine will get coded in the sixth amino acid position because of that instead of circling in a spherical way the beta polypeptide chain will take a curve it will take a curve and it will become a sickle shaped thus the rbcs will become sickle shaped fine only the shape of the rbc changes which is going to affect the organ uh, that is human beings uh, survival so here i did not add the genotype okay now let me directly go to the symptom what you have to remember in the sickle cell anemia the defect lies in the dna which is coding uh, specially the defect lies in the dna which codes for the sixth amino acid of the beta chain instead of glutamic acid valine will get coded now let us see the symptoms so here because the shape changes the rbc shape changes it will carry less amount of oxygen it will carry less amount of oxygen when the body will get less amount of oxygen automatically the physical efficiency of a person also will get affected he will i mean he will produce a uh, less energy so that is the first symptom and the rbcs have got less life span the life span of the rbcs will be less fine and then uh, the sickle shaped rbcs they tend to come closer together they tend to attach with each other they form a small clot and these clot will prevent the normal flow of the blood in the blood vessels fine they will hinder the normal flow of the blood vessels hence the flow will not flow normally that is the blood flow will be not normal the as the clots will block the way and because of that in the joints recurrent pain will occur and that pain is very painful and that is called sickle cell pain crisis it is called sickle cell pain crisis and usually kidney and the joints will suffer a lot so the symptoms and what is sickle cell anemia what are the causes what are the symptoms it will be asked in the annual exam for 3 marks what do you remember in the sickle cell anemia sickle cell anemia it is a autosomal recessive disorder fine and here where the defect lies in the rbc the rbc is instead of spherical they will become sickle shape what is the effect of this shape they carry less amount of oxygen and their life span will be less and they tend to form a clump which is going to form the clot and which will prevent the normal blood flow and they also uh, causes the sickle cell pain crisis so one positive point is there here the person with the sickle cell trait under heterozygous condition is resistant to malaria the person with the trait under recessive condition is resistant to malaria let me just write this let me uh, write the genotype of this sickle cell anemia uh, now i told you that under heterozygous condition the person is resistant to malaria now the genotypes of the sickle cell anemia are see, hb represent the hemoglobin if it is normal if a uh, gene for the production of the hemoglobin is normal then it is indicated by a 
so as we are deployed uh, so hpa and hba is normal uh, the individual will produce is normal rbc everything is normal if one normal gene and one sickle cell gene is present then it is indicated by hbs then this condition is called heterozygous it is called heterozygous here the person produces the normal rbcs as well as sickle shaped rbcs fine so that is the heterozygous condition and this condition the person with the heterozygous will never suffer with the malaria so usually it is studied in africa fine the person with both defective genes on both the chromosome will suffer with the sickle cell anemia so usually it is not exactly known why the person with heterozygous condition is resistant to malaria but it is told that the due to the change in the shape the malarial parasite that is plasmodium cannot enter into the rbcs and they you know that their one part of their life cycle as they are digenetic their part of their life cycle is carried in the rbc and the gametes are formed in the rbc itself the one process of uh, part of life cycle is completed in the rbc so it is a problem it is told that it is a problem but the exact reason is uh, not given in the book so what all things you have learned today you have learned the hemophilia you have learned the color blindness and you have learned the sickle cell anemia in next period let us go through the another two disorders that is thalassemia and uh, phenylketonuria